The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. So I would like to offer some practical steps, practical ways that you can appropriate this great plan that God has for you. I'm not a motivational speaker. So I have to take the word of God well. So just knowing that God has a great future for you uh, may not mean anything that much. So I want you to pay attention and then Take some few ways by which you can appropriate this because we want to get into that great future. So, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 5 and 6, and we will take verse 11. Jeremiah 29, verse 5. Verse 6 and verse 11. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. You can take yours. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. <laughs> Increase in number there, don't decrease. Even in a foreign land, God wanted Israel or Judah to increase. Increase and don't decrease. And this is the word of God. You see, the word of God is active and living. And when this word of God comes to you, it is active and there's life in it. So increase in number. Do not decrease. Why? For I know the plans that I have for you. Declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Now this is God's way to the exile in Babylon. And I believe that it is word for every generation of believers. In every situation and in every circumstance. Because Christ Jesus has made this possible. God has plans for every one of us. God has plans for every one of us. Plans to prosper us and not to harm us. Plans to give us hope and a future. As new creations, our future is better than our now. And this we must trust. That God has hope and a great future for us. This we must trust. You see, for those of us who are born again, the Bible says this, blessed is any one of us who does not Walk in step with the wicked. 
Say we shira yen in shani ya yen nante aboni for akwenso. Or stand in the way of sinners. Na unyina di bonye for akwemu. Or sit in the company of scoffers. Na unti na feudi for tinabia. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord. And upon his law he meditates day and night. He says that that person. Is like a tree planted by streams of water. Whose leaves do not wither. Whatever they will do, they will prosper. Now, this is the word of God for us. It is for generations. Those of us who are born again should believe that we are planted by streams of water. Our leaves will never wither. And whatever we do, we will prosper. Verse 4 says this. Psalm 1 verse 4. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. But we are not like chaffs. This we must trust. Trust. Trust is confident expectation of something. Confident expectation of something. Usually something positive. Now, this expectation should quicken us into actions that will bring us that will bring about the great future, as you say. So trust what the Lord has said. And this confident expectation should inspire us into actions that will take us into the great future that God has for us. The future that God anticipates for us. This trust should encourage us to study her. So when the Bible says that God has great plans for you, does not mean that sit and fold your arms. Now the trust should encourage us to study her. Now the trust should encourage us to work her. This trust, this expectation of the great future should encourage us to hold our spouses with our two hands. Now, this trust and expectation of this great future and this promise of God should encourage us to raise our children to serve the church and to serve the state. Now, Trust is to inspire hope, not fear. See, life is a cocktail of good and bad. Ups and downs. It is laced with a lot of uncertainty. How am I going to get well? How am I going to meet the right partner? How am I going to get this disturbing issue over me? How am I going to get this business back on track? How can I keep this momentum going? See, these are real threats. But do not fear. God will help you. God will help you. Now listen to God. In Isaiah 41 from verse 9. Said listen to God. In Isaiah 41 verse 9. If you have not heard God before, 
to encourage you to open your ears and listen to God. Isaiah 41 verse 9. Now I took you from the ends of the earth. From its farthest corners I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and I have not rejected you. So if God has not rejected you, what should we do? Verse 10. So do not fear. For I am with you. Do not be dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my my righteous right hand. The Lord say, "Instruct na me new ewo ho, and ma wa kume ntu na me new nyang kopon me shewo ding na me buawo, and so me de me tiri ni nifa me kura umu." Amen. Amen. Verse eleven. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgrace. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Now one one. So now verse 12. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. Now verse 13. Let's read together. Those of you who can read for ready go. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. I'm saying to you. That is God's way. Do not fear. For me, I've been hearing, do not fear, do not fear. So this one doesn't have But the last part, I like the, I will help you. <laughs> do not fear. I will help you. Brothers, this is the written word of God. The sure word of prophecy. See, it trans Saints generation. It is forever settled in heaven. Jehovah God who has called you by name. Will not just uphold you with his right hand of righteousness. He promises to help you. So do not be afraid. He promises to help you. So do not be afraid. Now listen to me, brothers. There is a force of, in fear that paralyzes. There is a force in fear that can cripple you forever. Fear brings one to a state of helpless stoppage. Now, helpless stoppage. Now, you, you just do not want to stop by. It is as if you have come to your wit's end. Now, inactivity. And sometimes because of fear, people at home, if you ask them, why you know this, I'm unemployed. Not because he doesn't have graces and talent and abilities, but the fear. Inability. Fear stifles initiatives. And creativity. Fear suppresses talents. And makes one feel inferior. Now, 
God has great plans for you. Don't allow fear to cripple you. God is with you. He will help you. I don't want to say this year. Uh, because if he will help you, it's not about this year. <laughs> it is about you. As long as you exist on this earth, and God remains God. And Satan remains Satan. He will help you. I wanted to talk about Satan, but I'll stop. <laughs> I don't want to, to make him popular. But there is Satan. But you can't compare him with our great God. Genesis 3 verse 9. I'm saying that there's a force in fear. That paralyzes. Proverbs Genesis 3 verse 9. Now, this is a very popular test. Uh, pay attention to it. But the Lord God called the man. Where are you? The next verse. He answered, I heard you in the garden. And I was afraid. This is the first time the word afraid. Surfaces in scripture. Now I say, me say, me and a di kind eba Because I was naked, so I hid. If you say no, me dadeja inti me But you see, it isn't so much about the fact that they were naked that that caused them to hide, but fear always prepares a hiding place for its captives. Fear will always prepare a hiding place for talents. Until you become inferior. You feel inferior and you can be part of the competition. There is a paralyzing force called fear. Why am I saying this? that it isn't so much of their nakedness, but the fear itself will always hide you? Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. Are we together? Verse 1. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And for seven years, he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Now verse 2. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain cliffs caves and strongholds now median sa a year in Israel so median in Israel for year a two ah a what a mipomu ne a buddhain and ne huntabia fi now the caves and the cliffs and the strongholds were not prepared by the Medians for the Israelites, but for the fear of the Medianites, fear turned human beings into rats and rabbits. I don't know it so they live in holes. Any in Tabia, any a Mipo Munto Kura, Israel for Eko Rayano, and your Median for Nayama Wong, now so Median for Hun Hunti, Wankasa, or yet Edima Wong. Fear will always prepare a hiding place for the captives. A who bribe a mono or be. Fear will always push you into the high, into a hiding place. But I want to call you out. Come out from where you are hiding. For God has plans for you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Please come out from where you are hiding. And wholeheartedly rely on the integrity of the word of God. Now, his strength and his ability to do what he has promised. He has the ability 
to do what he has promised. How is the help going to come? Where will it come from? And how is the help going to come? When he says, I will help you. Now this help is wrapped in his plans for you. Now, he has given us his written word which contains his will and his plan for your life. Now, 2 Timothy 3 verse 14. Are you together? Fine. I like the verse 14 for many reasons. Say, but as for you, continue what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from him you have learned it. Now, what do you And then verse 15. And how from infancy at that age you have known the holy scriptures and how and which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus na wo fi mo frase nim tre kronkron no a e betumi ama wa hunu nyansa afa kristo yesu mujidi so akonkwanje now the scripture breathes wisdom adofo no chiro no e hume not just wisdom for you to accept Jesus as Lord, but wisdom that brings liberation and abundance. All scripture is God breathed. And it's useful for teaching. Now, rebuking for correcting for training in righteousness see so when you sit behind the bible and you cultivate the habit of reading you are always being taught by God you are being rebuked by God God is correcting you he is training you in righteousness now for what purpose? Now verse 17 says that so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is the general word of God. But you see, when you read the Bible, you will not find names like Eric Nyamiche. Maybe you can have Kwesi I know in it, but I don't, I've, never, I've, not, I've not seen it yet. Eric Nyamiche, Ebiana, Kwesi Kwesi Ano, Umdia. Yes, and then who will Eric Nyamiche marry? It's not special, it's not there in scripture. Now, why in Eric Nyamiche ever warren we when she had Chirimu ever thrown him? But he has all these details. But if he, we were to write them in one book, can you imagine how big this book? Even John said things about Christ alone. If they were to write, we would have carried this book to church. So the minutest details concerning us, he knows. So apart from the general word of God that gives us wisdom and reveals his will and plan for us, he has specific plans for every one of us. And in those plans. Now, we he wait. promises to help us. Isaiah 30 verse 21. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21. And I want us to read together if you can. Now pay attention to today's instructions. And then whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. 
walk in it. Na waso and so back to what she and same be said. Ye in your quang say, Monfa nifo, say, Monfa benkumo, one nante so. Many years ago, I was torn between attending a certain school in either in the one in uh, Kumasi or the one in the north. And that one was a small town in the northern region. If we shall be in the region, not my dream, I can say, if I could be a semi core at my father was well aware that I've, I've uh, what do you call it? I've had admission in both schools. Then he came to me and he said, which of them will you uh, want to go? Uh, then he just went past me and, and I told him that I'll pray about it. So in the night, I went to the church house alone. I prayed throughout that. I night. prayed throughout the night. Then I I had this revelation. Now somebody was showing me a bunch of millets like that. So I said, I said, okay, Gwena, <laughs> he has finished. I to said, So I came home. Then in the morning, my father said, yesterday he didn't uh, tell me which of the schools, so I'll talk to my friends. Also, I'll go to the north. I said, oh, and I said, oh, I said, oh, <laughs> because we don't have this kind of plans in in Kumasi. Uh, and my father looked at my face. And he shook his head. Because he thought there was something wrong with my head. <laughs> but you see, God has directed me. And I wouldn't want to joke with that at all. I wouldn't tell you the experience I had in the north. It is one of the reasons why I'm standing here today. You see, don't rely on so-called prophets because God knows how to talk to you. My firstborn is as like 15 years older than the last born. But I, I, I know how to talk to all of them to understand. I know how to talk to the big one. I know how to talk to the little one. Even when the little one, you see, when my children are babies and toddlers, I always carry them at my back. And sometimes, you know how to make this one sleep and how to make the big one to sleep. So God knows how to meet you and speak the language that you, a baby Christian, can understand. If you like, go and ask Samuel. He will show you some of these things. How God could speak to a toddler like Samuel. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ear will hear a voice behind saying, This is the way. We walk in it. Then walk in it. Sometimes we bear needless pains all because we do not carry our issues to God in prayer. You see, when God loves you, he loves you. And nothing can thwart his plans for your life. The only person that can frustrate God's plan for your life is you yourself. See, Joseph's brothers felt that they were destroying him. Now, they made sure that the vision that 
and the dream that Joseph had never came to pass. But they were shot one day. And so they be. When, when Joseph told them, Bra, Yosef, catch it you said, meant it evil. But God took that evil and and turned it and round and for, your good, for your good. Now, brothers, have confidence in the plans of God. Have that consciousness that he is with you and that he promises to help you. Have that consciousness that he has great plans for your future. So seek him in all your ways. Draw him into your decision making. Proverbs 3 verse 5. No, no. Draw him when you are making decisions. Now let's read this together. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6. 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 Verse Submit to him, Hunu and he will make your path straight. Hunu no, ewa wakwe ni ne mu no no eno beti ne wakwe. Psalm thirty-seven four says this. Yeshe enyum ebiasa enso enyumu na eno. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Ma weninka ebradi ho ne wamaudi wakuma pe. I like this one because God. Even gives us the desires of our hearts. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the new day sun. For what kind of See, I want to call on you, brothers, to wholeheartedly rely on the integrity of the word of God. Rely on his strength. He's a rock of ages. And his ability to perform what he has promised. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. I want you to open your eyes if you can. And look, look, look intently in this book. And I want to encourage you. Especially those of you on the Zoom. To read. Can I see them or they are gone? They are gone. They are there. Okay. And God is able, listen, to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times and having all that you need, you are bound in every good work. Now, my interest is just the first part. And God is able. One day the Israelites ask, Can God? Can God? That is an abomination. We because God is able. Let us trust him. Like Abraham did. Without weakening in faith. He faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. Since he was about a hundred years old. And Sarah's womb was also dead. Sometimes when you read these verses and you don't meditate, you may think that this is just a rhyme. But it's a fact. I don't you see, know. with that weakening in faith, he faced the fact. 
He himself, oh, he faced the fact that his body was good as dead. He himself, oh, no he knows his body. <laughs> and the Bible says because he was 100 years. And he, he faced the fact. And then the wife's womb was as good as dead. It was also dead. Yet. He did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God. Concerning the promise of God. But was strengthened in faith and gave glory to God. Now let's read 21. He fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. May our eyes be open to his plans for our future. And may we have the strength to cooperate with him as he leads us into our great future. All we need is to trust like Abraham did. That God is able to do that which he has promised. So there are certain facts that you know that you do not have money. I mean it is a fact. But don't waver in faith. Don't doubt the promise of God. It is a fact that you are grown. And in that local assembly, there is no young man that seems to be like your size. But if you want to trust God, he can create a brand he knew him and be he will be shocked. <laughs> uh, this friend of mine was praying for her husband and struggling. Madam, for you know, The one day I went to her house. What is going on? Say, Eric, I had a dream. What kind of dream was that? I saw this. Tall image of a young man entering my room. Hey, so me who brand to quite in thing grammobia. Oh, but who am I? Demo. I said, Chang Chang. Now me catch and say, Ah, give me your hand. Marry that guy. Marry that guy. Ah, what you know? Ah, we dey. Do I? Say, Eric. Say, tall eyes. Say, don't just. I'm not joking. I said, Marry that guy. Now go and meet the. You saw. You saw this image in the midst of your prayer, didn't you? Um, pay bo mu. I know. Who said you were? Marry that. What you know? What you know? Two weeks later, I was like, Eric. I said, Eric. Some young man. I brand to you. I said, Is he tall? I said, Oh, wow. Like the image you saw? He said, You're who you Exactly. I said, My friends, God is able. I don't know. I mean, there are certain facts about life. No, maybe, oh, wow. But I see, Jesus' name is truth. Truth is. Senior brother to fact. No cre when yin a chance somewhere dao. Now it will always overcome fear. May we trust God. May we trust in the great plans that He has for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. She said, Papa, and your bonnet dear never papa give you hope and a future. God bless you.